Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time of day you're joining this service, welcome. We begin with some announcements. As always, if you know of anyone who needs help during this time of lockdown and isolation, please get in touch with me at the manse. Local churches are working together with folk from the community to make sure that no one is in need. A virtual vestry runs again this week on Wednesday the 3rd of June from 7pm. This is a time when anyone can drop in and have a chat online. You can stay for five minutes or you can stay longer if you wish. The link is on the church web page and will be on the Facebook page nearer the date. Now these next few announcements will depend on what time you're watching this service for they all relate to Pentecost Sunday services on the 31st of May. The moderator of the Church of Scotland, the Right Reverend Martin Fair, is hosting a Pentecost service on the Church of Scotland website at 10am on Sunday the 31st of May. The service will feature contributions from all over Scotland the service will also be available to download at any time after that and the link for all of this is on the South Holborn Church web page. And also on Sunday a special service is being live streamed from Ferry Hill Church at 11am. This service will celebrate the creation of the new presbytery of Aberdeen and Shetland. This marks a real change in the life of the church in Aberdeen as we become part of something new, joining with sisters and brothers in faith from Shetland. The service will feature the Reverend Hutton Steele, moderator of the New Presbytery, the Right Reverend Martin Fair, moderator of the General Assembly, and will include contributions from Aberdeen and Shetland and also a special recording of a choir and orchestra that's been formed online especially for this service. As the service will be live, you'll need to join at 11am using all the links on the, church of, on the South Holborn Church website. And finally, on Sunday evening at 7pm, the congregations of South Holborn, Ferry Hill and Rotherston West are having a joint service for Pentecost. This service will take place on Zoom and the link for that is also on the South Holborn Church website. Also there you'll find a graphic to download and print off which will be used during the service. Today for Pentecost our call to worship comes from the story of the Valley of Dry Bones in Ezekiel 37. O oh my people, I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. I will place you on your own soil and you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act always, says the Lord. The Spirit of God brings us here today. Though we may be tired and worn out, dried up and filled with drought, like the bones in the valley, the breath of God will revive us. The Word of God will awaken us. Today at Pentecost, through the life-giving Spirit of God, we come to experience new life.
let us draw near to God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this Pentecost day, we remember with awe the events of that first Pentecost. We remember how you came through your Holy Spirit and life was never the same again. We recognize how you turned the disciples into apostles, how you changed them from uncertainty and doubt to purpose and faith. One moment hiding behind locked doors, the next preaching to the crowds. So today, loving God, come to us in our time through that same Holy Spirit. Transform our experience of faith. Breathe new energy into our discipleship and new fire into our faith. And as we worship today, fill our hearts with a desire to love and serve you such as we've never known before. Father God, we offer you our worship today. Heavenly Father, too often we act like those in the crowd that first Pentecost who scoffed. We're too fond of our own way to follow your way. We're too much in control to allow your spirit to move into our lives. Instead of receiving the gifts of the Spirit, we barricade ourselves against change. How often do we try to frustrate and obstruct the work of your Holy Spirit? How often are we numb to the prompting of that Spirit? Lord God, in the name of your Son, Jesus, forgive us our sins. And through the power of your Holy Spirit, Teach us again what it means to be your children, to follow and serve you. Loving God, as we worship today, send your Holy Spirit upon us. Lead us to a fresh understanding of you. Lead us to a deeper experience of your company. Lead us to a renewed calling to your will. In Jesus' name we ask these things. And in Jesus' name we say together the words of our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our first hymn today is hymn 596, Breathe on me, breath of God. And today we sing verses 1, 2 and 3. The reading is taken from Acts chapter 2, reading verses 1 to 21. 
the coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. Peter addresses the crowd. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, still our hearts and minds. Drive out all which distracts from your word. Speak to us now through your servant in the power of your Holy Spirit. And may this meditation be acceptable in your sight. Dear Lord, we pray. Amen. There is an old story told about a man who found a pig. It seems that this man was driving into the city in his Land Rover and suddenly a stray pig walked in front of him. The man stopped his car and managed to catch the pig and somehow or other get it into the back of the Land Rover. And then he thought, what on earth am I going to do now? So he checked around a few of the houses round about and to see if anyone anywhere could understand where this pig had come from. And no one knew anything. So the man drove off in his Land Rover and found the first policeman that he could find. He said to the policeman, look, I found this pig, what am I supposed to do? And the policeman thought for a moment and said, well, you could take him to the zoo. So the man happily got into his Land Rover and drove off. The next day the policeman was out on his rounds and was quite surprised to see the same man in the same Land Rover. But this time the pig was sitting in the passenger seat. The policeman stopped him and said, I thought I told you to take that pig to the zoo. And the man replied, we went to the zoo yesterday and the pig had a great time. So today we're going to the cinema. It's easy to laugh at a lack of communication or at some misunderstanding because that's the basis of most comedy. Remember the famous two Ronnie sketches, Fork Handles? But also misunderstanding and miscommunication 
can be dangerous. And we've certainly seen that this week in the events down at Westminster. Today we celebrate Pentecost. And I think the message of Pentecost, the story of Pentecost, is, those, is one of those really confusing, misunderstood and miscommunicated Christian celebrations. For Pentecost concerns the arrival of the Holy Spirit to the disciples. But what do we mean by that? What do we mean by the Holy Spirit? What's going on in this story? What is this person, this power, this presence from God that seems so powerful and yet so strange? This is that same spirit promised by Jesus himself. He promised that after he left and ascended to heaven, that the disciples would not be on their own. That he would send a guiding force, a presence from God. To be the light and the life that guided the disciples. And for Luke who wrote the book of Acts. This one incident. Pentecost. The coming of the Holy Spirit. Is the single most important event in the life of the church. The Holy Spirit is mentioned no fewer than 40 times. In the first 13 chapters of Acts alone. As that first church begins to grow. It is by the Holy Spirit that God lives in the lives of believers and in the church. It is by the Holy Spirit that that first church grows. It is the Holy Spirit that gives guidance to the leaders of that church. And it is the Holy Spirit that empowers the faith of the individual Christians as they face the things that befall them. Willie Barclay says, The Christian courage to meet the dangerous situation. The Christian power to cope with life more than adequately. The Christian eloquence when eloquence is needed. The Christian joy which is independent of circumstance are all attributed to the work of the Spirit. So if we are to be the church in our community today, If we are to be God's people in our place and in our space and in our parish, then we need that action of that same Holy Spirit. So what can we learn about the Holy Spirit from our reading today? Well, firstly, the Spirit gives us the power of God to accomplish what we could not accomplish on our own. The disciples were those same ordinary followers of Jesus who had fled him. They were the same depressed group of confused followers who waited in the upper room. They were the same group there at the ascension who went away with praise and amazement. The people didn't change. Their skills didn't change. Their experiences didn't change. God didn't transplant them with someone else. They are the same disciples. But with the power of God in the Holy Spirit, they become the ones who will lead the church to growth. They become the ones who share the story of Jesus' love with all the world. In my ministry over the last almost 20 years, When I've asked people to invite others to church or even to talk about their faith, the response I most often receive is, oh, I couldn't do that. And I understand that response completely. We don't feel adequate to the task of living out our faith. That's part of the reason why we keep it to ourselves. But to be honest with you, if you'd asked Jesus' disciples, they would have said exactly the same thing. If you'd told Peter that he'd be preaching a sermon to a big crowd of people in Jerusalem, he would have laughed at you and said, oh, I couldn't do that. 
Jesus has not left us on our own to muddle through. He sends the Holy Spirit, the helper, the presence of God in our lives. And too often we've ignored that promise of help from Jesus. We've ignored that power that is ours to call upon. We've tended to think of the Holy Spirit as something for other people. Yet that Spirit is not reserved for the special or for the chosen or for the preachers or for the great leaders of the church. The Holy Spirit is God's gift to all Christians to enable them to live out the call of their faith. So we need to stop being afraid of the Spirit. To stop being afraid of the language around the Holy Spirit. To stop being afraid of where the Spirit will lead us. So the Holy Spirit is God's power to accomplish what we could not accomplish on our own. And the second thing we learned from our story today is that we read that the crowd who gather to hear Peter each hear his message in their own language. It's as if the disciples have been given the gifts of language. And I think that's probably what frightens us most about the Holy Spirit. We don't understand what is happening. It feels like we will lose control if we let this Holy Spirit take over. We'll end up strange and weird. But do we really need to get so wound up? Do we need to get so bothered about the spectacular and the strange? We have a tendency to concentrate on the wrong things. Because the point of the story of Pentecost is not that the disciples suddenly became multilingual. The disciples were almost all Galileans. And the region of Galilee was famous for its accent. The nearest I could equate it to is that broad bucking accent. And what amazes the crowd, what touches them so deeply is that they hear the message of the gospel in this country accent, not as some alien thing, but each of them hears in a way that they can understand. Each of them hears the message in a manner that seems relevant to them and their lives. That's the point of Pentecost. The point of the story is not the strange gifts that the Spirit gives, but rather that the Spirit does whatever is necessary for people to hear the good news of Jesus for them. The Spirit takes whatever means are necessary for people to discover that God loves them. And that's why the Holy Spirit is so relevant to us today. That's why we need the Spirit in the midst of our church. In our society, the message of God's love has been lost amidst so many other voices and so many other choices. But people need to hear that Jesus was and is for them. They need to hear it not in some old-fashioned way that the church has always spoken. They need to hear about that love in ways that are true for their lives right now. They need to know that they are loved personally and that the story of Jesus is for them right now in their lives, whatever their experiences, just as did that crowd at Pentecost. And as the church, we're not simply called to hold services and invite people to come and do what we do. Instead, we're called to go out so that our people, our neighbours, our friends, our colleagues, our family, the folk who live in this place around our church can discover that love for themselves. And the way that we do that 
is not shaped by us as a church, but by the people that we go to. They must hear God's love in their own language and their own experience. And God sends his Holy Spirit to us to enable, to guide, to inspire, to empower, to lead us in doing that very task of sharing and living out the gospel in a relevant way in our community. Everyone says that when we come out of lockdown and eventually move on from this COVID-19 virus, the world will be a very different place. Maybe that's also a chance for us to live a different kind of church. Pentecost might just be asking us a question. What kind of church will we be after lockdown? What kind of church do we want to be? Can we dare to ask God for a Pentecost blessing of the Holy Spirit so that the people around us come to discover for themselves that God's love is for them? Amazed and astonished, the crowds asked, Are not all of these who were speaking Galileans? How is it then that we hear each of us in our own native language? May the people around us say as well that they hear the story of God's love in a way that is true to them. Amen. We join now in our prayers for ourselves and for others. And I leave a time of silence during the prayer for you each to offer your own thoughts and prayers to God. Let us pray. Loving God, when we reflect on the Pentecost story of the Spirit coming to the disciples, we remember that your promise is to send that same Spirit to all of your people, to inspire and guide and challenge. And when we recall the birth of the church on that Pentecost day, we remember that your church is still called into the world, inspired and led by that same Spirit, to deepen faith, to speak of your love, to reflect your care in the face of need. Thank you, loving God, for the presence of the Spirit and for the equipping that your Spirit brings. And thank you, Lord, for family at this time, for loved ones there to support us, to demonstrate love and care in action, to do what they can for us in a time of need. Thank you for friends, those to whom our welfare really matters, who seek to help us in whatever ways they can, showing their concern, compassion and friendship, not just through words, but through deeds. Hear our prayers, for those who do not have such support, who are truly alone, those for whom long days of isolation were already an all too frequent reality, and those who now feel cut off from all, frightened, helpless and hopeless. Loving God, reach out to them, assuring them that you are by their side and that they are not alone. And help us to in whatever ways we can, to reach out likewise and show them that they are not abandoned or forgotten. In the silence, Lord God, we each name our own needs, the needs of family and friends, the needs of those around us before you, in our own personal and private prayers.
Lord God, in your Holy Spirit, come to those who are ill today, those who are ill in hospital and those at home, those living with COVID-19 and those living with other illnesses and disease. In your Holy Spirit, come to all who are desperate today, those who are mourning loved ones, facing the awful reality of bereavement at a time of isolation, those who are abused and victimised, those most desperate in our society, those who have lost jobs, those who are without a home, a place to feel safe. Lord God, in your Holy Spirit, come to those living and working on the front line in this time of crisis, those working in hospitals and care homes, those providing the services that we have so often taken for granted. Lord, in your Holy Spirit, come to those in leadership, those in the scientific field who provide advice and guidance and those who are working for a vaccine. And Lord God, in your Holy Spirit, come to your church. Move amongst your people. Bless us with vision, with a passionate faith. Equip us to serve you, to be proclaimers of your joyous good news. By your Spirit among us, provide all that we need, not merely to keep the church going, but rather to flourish and to grow. Equip us to worship with passion, to face life with faith, and to speak out for you with confidence and courage. In Jesus' name we ask all these things. Amen. Our last hymn today is hymn 600, Spirit of God unseen as the wind. We close our service today with the blessing. God, who sent the Spirit at Pentecost, send that same Spirit to you now. And may the peace of the Spirit comfort you. May the power of the Spirit challenge you. May the presence of the Spirit enable you to live in love and in service. 
to the glory of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. Blessed.